Hi, how are you? My name is Anna and welcome to my channel. I've got some very exciting news. For those of you who have been following me on my social media and all my other channels, you have probably seen that I have a new book out. Ta-da! Yay! Mm, my lovely bookie. Um, and I adore my book. I do. I truly adore it. It's all about mosaic knitting and crochet. It has 75, yes, 75 designs, well, chart de designs that are full of mosaic goodness. Yay. But before we start talking about the book, let me apologize first to anyone who's waiting for the Tunisian crochet videos. They are coming. I'm so sorry for the delay. I'm truly sorry. I'm... I'm not very organized. Um, they are coming. I'm so sorry about the delay. It's just, you know what, when I s get one thing done, another thing comes on top. And I did make some of them already. They just need to be edited. But then this exciting thing happened. And I will make some videos on this. And while I'm doing the videos for this, the other ones will be coming out as well. I'm telling you, one day I will get organized. I will get incredibly organized. And all the videos and all the patterns will just all come out and everybody will be shocked. And I'll be like, you see, I can do it. I did say I can do it. So yes, I look forward to these days, as I'm sure you are too. But for now, let's talk about this beauty. So mosaic, i show you here, look at this, it's so pretty. So mosaic chart directory for knitting and crochet. This is the official title, yes it is. Um, as I mentioned before, it has 75 designs. Each design, each design has a swatch which is knitted and crocheted. You also have written instructions which are for knitting and then for cro for crochet. Sorry, my, my camera, I'm looking the wrong way around. And also, each design has a chart. So charts for knitting and crochet are both the same. And I'm just really excited to bring you a book that is for both crafts, for knitting and crochet. I have wanted, I have wanted to do this book for so long. And I'm just beyond excited that I can finally share this book with you. I'm just overjoyed. Thank you so much for David and Charles and Quattro for publishing this, this book. And I hope you love it as much as I do. For those of you who follow me on some on social medias and also um, in the stories here, you have seen that I have posted some sneak peeks into the actual book, into the designs of the book. So I'll be doing this more. So you'll be able to, to see a good chunk of the design. But look how pretty. Oh my God, the chicken is my favorite. Well, actually, there's lots of favorites one. Look, it's chicken. Ah. It's amazing chicken. You've got to love a chicken. Look, I also have a bee. Look at this bee. Eee, love a bee. Anyway, yeah, distracted. Some of, all of the designs I absolutely adore. And it's just such a, such a pleasure to share with you a book full of them, 75 of them. I know! So after my um, talk, I will show you how to mosaic knit, which is fabulous. I will show you how to mosaic knit in stocking stitch and garter stitch. All the patterns in this book, all the knitted swatches have been knitted using, using stocking stitch, US stocking stitch. I will show you how to work mosaic knitting, knitting in stocking stitch and garter stitch. I also tell you in the book how to convert your patterns into garter stitch as well. All the crochet swatches in the book have been made using the inset mosaic crochet method. But in the book, let me just find the page, there it is. But in the book, of course, I also show you how to convert your chart into overlay and also how to work the overlay and into Tunisian mosaic crochet and how to convert your chart and work Tunisian cr mosaic crochet. And also in the book, of course, I give you full tutorials on how to mosaic knit, how to mosaic crochet and all the explanation on basic stitches and everything. So you've got everything at the back here. So don't worry, you are not on your own. 
I will show you everything. And of course, you have those videos which are to accompany my book. So we, we are starting with mosaic knitting. Then we're going to do inset mosaic crochet, then overlay mosaic crochet, and then Tunisian mosaic crochet. Because I want you to be able to use this book on every single method you choose. If you would like to pay, purchase a signed copy from me, the link to my website is in the description box below. Also, if you purchase it from me, you get a PDF version of a pattern for a fantastic uh, little like project bag in overlay crochet and knitted one. So you get so you get them automatically when you purchase the book from me. However, the book is available from most bookstores and Amazon and DNC we website and everything. But before we get started on mosaic knitting, if you like the video, then please do like, share and subscribe. Obviously, if you don't like the video, you, you don't have to do anything. But if you do, it will really mean a lot. So thank you so much. And let's get mosaic knitting. The swatch that we'll be working on today is taken from the Aztec section. This is the Aztec 11. I've printed myself a chart already so I can so you can see it in bigger form. Before we start, there is a few vital things that we must know about the charts, the mosaic charts. The row that is not shown on the chart is a base row. This will be, of course, explained in the book. We will cast on a desired number of stitches in the opposite zip color to our first row. The first squares of each row indicate what color we will be working on this row. Also, each row is worked twice. So we work on the right side, we, wor we work from right to left, and on the ro wrong side, from left to right. And for those two rows, we will work in the color that is indicated by the first square. So for the ease, of course, I'm going to be using the light as the light squares and darker color as the dark squares. So when we work on our light row, so indicated by our, by our light square, we will slip the stitches that are in dark squares and knit the ones that are in light boxes. So light boxes are knitted and dark boxes are slipped. That's on the right side. On the wrong side, because we will be working for the first few rows in stocking stitch, US stocking it stitch, we will slip the stitches in dark and pearl the stitches in white okay we will slip we, we will slip the stitches with the yarn at the back and always pearl wise you will see the red box here which is your pattern repeat this one is six stitches so you repeat it throughout you of course have two stitches at the front and one stitch at the back so these are not included in a pattern repeat, but must be worked at the beginning and this one at the end. So the first and the last stitch are called the salvage stitches. They are all they are they always stay the same. Very often they are knitted on every, they are knitted on every single row to give us a kind of a gutter stitch edge. Obviously, because we are working in stocking stitch, as you can hear here, your work will curl a little bit. That's the nature of stocking stitch or stocking stitch in US. To prevent this, you can transfer your work into a garter stitch, which I will show you like later. This is the one. Or you can add more stitches onto your salvage edge. So you can add two more, three more, however many you wish. Obviously, don't go overboard. But and work and work them on every single work, row row in garter stitch. So that will give you a kind of edge that might not curl as much. What is very important to remember in mosaic knitting that each row is worked twice. So you see your right side rows are marked on your right, your left side row, rows are marked to your left. So on the right side row, we, you will read the chart from right to left and on the wrong side from left to right. You basically repeat the same row twice. Instead of talking about it, let me show you how it's done. So also very important, use a washi tape to mark your rows, your rows. I always mark, especially in mosaic crochet, always above the row I'm, I'm working on. It's just easier for me to spot mistakes. 
but we are starting so obviously i've cast on already i've done i've done i've done a little, little bit already as you can see i've started with the green which is which is my dark color so i will cast on with the opposite to what i'm starting my first row of chart is my first row of chart it will be in a light color so i cast on in a dark color and knit one row and pull one row then i am able to start my chart because that will give me a nice base so this one is very easy row so we start with our first stitch which we will knit and that is going with the light color so we will only carry one color per row with, with us so one so we're going to knit then the next one is the dark square which means we are going to slip so we will simply insert our needle into the stitch as if to pearl and then slip it onto our next onto our right hand needle that's it that's all you have to do then our next one two three four five our five stitches are all knitted in the light stitch so we're going to knit five stitches. One, two, three, four, five. And the next stitch is a dark square, which means we have to slip. So we're going to again with the yarn in the back, insert our needle into the stitch as if to pearl and slip it onto our right hand needle. And then again, we are back to the beginning of our repeat and we're going to pearl, uh, sorry, to knit five. So one, two, three, four and five. And again, we are going to slip pearlwise and then knit five. So we're going to repeat a six stitch pattern repeat throughout until we reach the last stitch. One, two, three, four, five, and slip. One, two, three, four, five, and slip. Okay, so that's our last pattern repeat here. And we've got one stitch left and this one we are going to knit. Okay. So that's our first row completed. So we worked, oopsie daisy, from right to left. And now we are going to work from left to right. This is very easy because basically all you do on this one, you don't have to look at the chart at all. You can just look at what you have done and you repeat exactly the same thing. So I'm going to knit the first stitch as well because I want my garter stitch edge. So I'm going to knit the first stitch. Then I'm going to move my yarn in between the needle to the front of work so I can pearl. But you see, this one is obviously green, which means I slipped it. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing here. Again, as if to pearl, insert your needles as if to pearl and slip it onto your right hand needle. And then pearl the next five. One, two, three, four and five and I come to my green which means I will slip it pairwise again and then knit the five. One, two, three, four, five. See, slip and just continue to work this to the end. You're basically purling all the stitches that have been knitted on the right side and slipping all the stitches that have been slipped. So now I'm on my last stitch and I'm going to knit this one because I want my garter stitch edges. See, so that's our first row of our chart is completed. Okay, so we can move on to the next one. And now, if we look, the first square of our chart is the green which means we'll be working in green for the next two rows when you're changing color for me personally the neatest way i have found that the color you just you finished working with stays at the front and you pick up the new color from the back that way when you are ready to pick up the other color when you pick it up in the same way it will wrap itself nicely around your edge create a sleeker edge Again, everyone has their own way. This is what I just find the neatest. So if we look at the chart, 
So we are, we now start to work in our dark yarn, and the first three squares are dark color, which means we will need knit those three squares. So one, two, and three. And now we come to our light colors. One, two, three, three as well. And we will slip those next three stitches. Yarn at the back, insert your needle as if to pearl into the stitch and slip it onto your right hand needle. And again, one, two, and three. Three stitches slipped. So now our next two colors are dark which means we will need those two but then we come to the end of our repeat so we start from the beginning of our repeat and the next one is also green or dark color which means we'll go one two three so we will knit the next three stitches so we're going to go one one two and three I want you to be very careful. So when you're going over a certain number of stages, don't pull your yarn tightly because it will pucker up. Always give it a bit of a stretch to make sure it stays nice and, well, not too loose because you don't want it too loose, but it must be nice and, and even basically because you don't want it too tight because it will pucker up and you don't want it too loose because it will be too gappy. So then we are back to our slip three. So this row is very easy. We basically got... Th slip three and knit three and knit three one two three and slip three and then knit three one two three one two three and then we come to almost our end so we've got one two as our as our repeat ends on two Oops, sorry and then the last stitch is a knit stitch as well in green and again on the wrong side we will do exactly what we have just done now but obviously working a pose a pose stitch is where we have worked the knit stitches so the first stitch i'm going to knit to give me the garter stitch border then i'm going to pearl the greens and slip the white and always slip pearl wise so pearl the greens or the dark squares, shall I say, the dark stitches, and slip the light stitches. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And then we come to our last, and the last stitch I'm going to knit. You see, so on the wrong side rows, you don't really have to look at the chart because you're repeating exactly what you have done. And you see, and the pattern is emerging really nicely. So that's the so that so that is it on stocking stitch. This is all you need to know to make a beautiful and successful mosaic knitting. But let me show you now how to work it on garter stitch. So why garter stitch? You can also do mixtures of garter and stocking stitch. So do two rows of garter and two rows uh, of, sto of, of stocking stitch. You can do mixtures. You can do anything, really. But why convert it into garter stitch? When we're working in stocking stitch, or stocking at stitch, our work can sometimes look uneven. This is unavoidable, purely because when we slip the stitches, they become elongated. By them being elongated, the stitches before them can borrow, which means they will become smaller. And that is the nature of the beast, you know, it's unavoidable. However, I don't mind it. I think the work is still very neat and it never bothered me. But putting aside whether the work can look uneven or not, a uh, garter stitch does not curl. So it's perfect to convert your mosaic chart into garter stitch if you want to make something that the edges are exposed, which means that you will not sew it up, you will not join it in any way, that you want this fabric to stay put without curling around the edges. So that way, converting your mosaic, your mosaic charts into garter stitch charts are perfect because you will have nice and even work without the curl. If we move our little washi tape to start our next row, we 
which is our row number five now. So we are now on our light row, which means we will knit the first stitch. So again, Oh, this is what I want. What I wanted to show you. See, so now I'm I'm taking the other color around. You see, and by knitting it, it wraps around it. And the same thing's going to happen with green. It just wraps around a lot nicer. Okay, so the knit, the first one is knit because it's a light one, and we are on a light color. The first two are dark squares, which means we're going to slip. So we're going to slip our next two. This is actually the same row as row, row number three, which is nice because we will do the same thing. So again, we're going to knit three because that's a three, our light ones. Yeah, it is exactly the same. And then we're going to slip three. And again, make sure you give yourself a bit of a stretch on the needle so your work doesn't pucker up so those the way when you slip the colors when you carry on onto the knit it doesn't pack her up slip always pairwise knit three slip and knit and then slip and the last one is going to be knit yes yeah so we've got the last two and the last one is the light one, which means that we will knit it. So now when we come to the wrong side, so what changes if we, when we convert into garter stitch? So all the stitches that we have knitted on the right side, we will knit on the wrong side. But all the stitches that we slipped on the right side with yarn at the back, we will slip now, but with yarn at the front. So they will still be slipped, pairwise as always, but this time with the yarn at the front. So let's start. So our first stitch is light. So we knit. And then we come to our two slip stitches. What will happen, we will bring, take our yarn, bring it in between the needles to the front of our work, and we will slip those stitches. Then take it back in between the needles, and then knit the three stitches. The reason we are doing this because we don't want the yarn to be at the front of our slip stitches. So let's say if I didn't move my yarn and just slip those next three and then knit it the next ones, what will happen is my yarn that I just moved will be in front of the work, you see? So it's in front of those slip stitches, which means the pattern wouldn't work. It will be interrupted. It will be messy. So let me just undo this quickly. One, two, three, and bring it forward. So I'm bringing it forward in between the needles and slip the next three. Then back again and make sure again you stretch your stitches out and knit the next three. You see, easy peasy, no? Bring it forward, slip the ones that you have slipped on the previous row, back and knit the ones that need to be knitted. Front, slip, back, knit. And again, two and last one. Let me show you one, one more row in garter stitch. So this is what it looks like, you see? So far, we've got the little bumps at the front. So let's move on to stitch number nine. No, sorry, seven and eight. So we are now on the dark side row. So we're going to pick up our dark collar and knit. So we've got one, two, three, four. So we've got four all together knits. One, two, three, four. And then we've got one slip. And this one again, yarn is at the back, we slip. And then we've got one, two, three, four, five. So three at the end of the repeat and two at the beginning of the repeat. So five all together. So we're going to knit five. 
So one, two, three, four, and five. And we're going to slip the next stitch with the yarn at the back. And then knit five. One, two, three, four, and five. Slip, and then uh, one more time. One, two, three, four, and five, and slip. And then we've got one, two, three, four, four stitches at the end. One, two, three, four. Perfect. We are correct. And we're going to just knit the last four. So that's our right side row done. So now we have to do the wrong side. And again, all the stitches that we have knitted on the right side, we're going to knit on the wrong side also. We're going to slip the slip stitches, but we're going to slip them with the yarn in front. So, four stitches we're going to knit, because that's our first four stitches in green, and we are using a green collar. One, two, three, four. We're going to slip this one, bring the yarn forward in between the needles, slip it, bring it backwards in between the needles, and then knit the next five. One, two, three, four, and five. Bring it forward, slip it pairwise, take it back, and knit one two, three, four, and five. We come to our, our light collar again, bring the yarn forward, slip it, take it back, and knit the ones that are in green. Slip, knit. To the end and that's it that's all there is to it you see so converting your your charts from stocking stitch to garter stitch couldn't be simpler also working it in stocking stitch couldn't be simpler mosaic knitting is very simple to achieve but it has incredible effects this is one of the simplest color work techniques going you don't have to carry any yarns with you all the way you work with the yarn with the one yarn per two rows creating the stunning color work effect however mosaic knitting does pull in a little bit so if you're combining your mosaic sections with just let's say simple stocking stitch i would switch to bigger needles just half a size bigger should should be enough but just to give your your mosaic a bit more room it's a beautiful color work technique without any of the tears thank you so much for for watching and i hope you enjoy the book again link is below in the description box and if you like this video then please do like share and subscribe Thank you so much for watching and I will see you very, very soon.